right, the project at hand right now is with this cement mixer. The plan is to set this up so I can run it on my other track loader. It runs fine on this one. I'll show you how this hooked up. So it's got the standard quick change like all skid steer attachments should have. Then it also plugs into the auxiliary hydraulics right here, which allows the skid steer to run the hydraulics on this unit. Now, since this also has two functions being the auger drive and the function to control the bottom chute, it also has this electrical connection here, which allows the operator to switch between which function is getting the hydraulic oil. And it's been working fine on this machine, but what I want to do, I have another skid steer similar in size to this one that did not come with the electronic switch to control which function is I want to get that installed in that machine so I can run this mixer on either one of my skid steers. So let's get this brought to the other skid steer and get it hooked up. As you can see, there's the auger running right there, both directions. And then when I flip this switch right here, it it activates that diverter valve which sends the hydraulic oil to this cylinder instead of the auger drive. This is what I got as a universal wiring harness. So that's just a length of wire with plugs on it. And here we got, here we have a switch. And that's, I guess that's got to find power somewhere. All right, let's get this installed in that machine. This is the plug that goes to the thing. This is the adapter for the Bobcat plug. Something that the Bobcat needs. All right, let's try to route this so it never gets ripped off of anything. Well, I've had this skid steer over a year now. This is, I've never had to fix this thing. This is the first time I've had this open. See, my Bobcat skid steers before this, I had that open a lot. You know, this thing's laid out pretty nice in here, too. Look how easy this would be to work on if I ever had to work on it. Like, look at all the hoses are easy to get to. If you're buying a skid steer, buy one of these. This is so much better than all the ones I've had before. Okay, let's get this wire routed. And good rule when doing wiring to something, always, if you're adding wires, put it with the wires that are already there. All right, so chances are we got power in here. Look at all these unused switches here. So light. Looks like what they want you to do is zip tie it right to the joystick.
All right, so just making sure that's not gonna be too annoying. This is the control I'm always using to travel the machine. This rocker switch here controls the third function. And this is high speed right here, you know, travel. And this is the new control for the accessory. And you know, that's not bad. Actually, that's a little sharp. I'll take that. All right, well, that's not too bad. If I find that too annoying, I'll move it somewhere else. Plenty of room down in there for that. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Plug that in. All right, so now all we gotta do is get some power to this. Instead of using this, let's see if we can use one of these fuses. The power probe. All right, so we got a few options here. We got reserve, we got wiper, because I don't have that. So we actually got the metal things. Do we have power? No. Ground. Nothing. I have ground. Green is ground. Let me turn the ignition on. Okay. All right. Nothing. Okay. So we can hook up to there or we can hook up to there. Because with the ignition on, that becomes power. And that becomes power. And with the ignition off, it turns into ground, which is fine. That way we won't have any parasitic draws all the time, just, just in case. Okay, let's hook that up. Let's grab one of these blue wires here since we got a little more slack. All right, that's gonna be our power source. I'm confident that's not gonna mess up anything because the machine didn't have a fuse in there in the first place. All right, that's the only way to make an electrical connection, solder and shrink tube. Those crimp connections, they work for like a year. This ground to make a good connection, I stripped it back, put shrink tube on it. The ring terminal, take that, pull that stuff right off of there. So put that in there. All right, then you take your soldering iron. And solder it. Then take the shrink tube. Put that on there. And that keeps the corrosion out. And that right there, that's an electrical connection that will stay working. And let's just ground this right here. All right, that's a good ground right there. All wired up. I almost cut out this chunk of wire here, but let me, let me just make sure this works first.
All right, so I put the new label in the fuse panel that way. If there's ever an issue in the future, it'll be easier to diagnose. And that's a good idea. Whenever you're putting a fuse panel in something, always leave extra spaces for future accessories. Alright, cabs bolted back down. Let's try this thing. 